Is there any objection? There is objection. <laughs> Order. Question number two, the Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What will be the focus of the government's economic programme going into the election on 20 September? Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, the government will focus on building on the recovery that's now underway uh, to support New Zealand households and businesses to create more jobs and to earn higher incomes. Uh, now that we have been able to manage through a very significant recession, uh, the impact of the earthquake, and clean up some of the damage done by the last Labor government, uh, we will look forward to helping New Zealanders organise the capital and the skills required to take advantage of the very substantial opportunities offered by a growing Asia-Pacific region. Order. Supplementary question, Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Supplementary to the Minister of Finance. What progress is the government making with its economic programme and how is this helping households and businesses? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, first of all, it's, uh, the recovery in the economy is principally the work of New Zealand's households and businesses supported by government. And government policy that has helped to support that uh, has been to get the government finances under control and get back to surplus, uh, to focus on all those areas across the economy that support growth, such as better infrastructure investment, for instance, a tidier, uh, more effective and more efficient uh, system for giving young New Zealanders skills, uh, reducing welfare dependency, uh, re-regulating the use of our natural resources so that we can be a prosperous economy as well as a clean, green economy. Right, right. And of course there are many other ways we have been supporting New Zealand households and businesses. Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Why is he claiming that everything is going swimmingly when the $1 billion deficit to 31 January Whoops. in his government's accounts is $637 million worse than he forecast just in December? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, as I've pointed out regularly in this House, uh, we can control expenditure to a significant extent, uh, but revenue can fluctuate. And in this case, well, bear in mind, in the previous financial year, we finished about $3 billion ahead of budget. Uh, on the most recent figures, in this year, tax revenue is about $800 million behind budget. The people who should take the most notice of that are the opposition parties, because it makes it pretty clear there isn't room to splash cash everywhere in election year. Supplementary question, Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister of Finance. What are some of the ongoing economic challenges the economy faces, and how will the government work to overcome them? Mr Speaker, Honourable Bill Mr. Speaker the, probably the main economic challenge is to manage our way through the next growth cycle, avoiding the excessive damage created during the last growth cycle under the last Labor government. For instance, it's inevitable that interest rates will rise sometime this year, uh, according to decisions of the Reserve Bank. We want to make sure interest rates are not driven to 10.5% to 11% by bad government policy and excessive government spending. Uh, that's probably one of the best things we can do to support New Zealand households. Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Is it correct that having inherited close to zero net government debt, he's soon to clock over $60 billion of borrowings? And is this more than any other Minister of Finance in New Zealand's history in nominal terms, and the worst in real terms since Muldoon? Order, order, Mr. Order. Speaker. Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, no. But it's another symptom of planet Labour, a place where the global financial crisis and the Christchurch earthquakes never happen. <coughs> and voters will increasingly see a party marooned on planet Labour, 1970s Fabianism at its worst. 
Supplementary question, Honourable Kate Wilkinson. A supplementary to the Minister of Finance. Going into the election on 20 September, what economic policies will this government reject because they would impose costs on households and cost jobs? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, it's pretty clear from uh, lessons learnt from the last cycle through the early 2000s up to 2008 what policies to avoid. One of those is a sharp increase in government spending, because that will push interest rates up much faster than they, should, than they need to go. The second one would be imposing a costly emissions trading system, which is guaranteed to put power bills up by around $500 per year, and in combination with a single buyer electricity authority would make household electricity bills significantly more expensive, not cheaper, as the opposition claim. Point of order, Grant Robertson. But I'd ask you to reflect on the question that was just asked there to the Minister of Finance in terms of uh, ministerial responsibility uh, by the way the question began with reference to the election. I know in the past when the Labor Party has tried to raise matters that were uh, talked about in an election campaign, we've been told that that hasn't necessarily been the responsibility of a minister. I just wonder if those sorts of questions are actually in order. Oh, yeah. And on this case, I think it was a line ball call by myself at the time the question went along the lines what uh, economic policies would the government reject in the lead into and I think on that basis it was enough to get it across the line to uh, address it as a responsibility of the current government but I will be mindful of these sorts of supplementaries between now and 31 July. Question number three, the right honourable Winston Peters. Thank you Mr Speaker, uh, this question is to the Prime Minister and ask does he have confidence in all of his ministers? If so, why? Why, Honourable Prime Minister? Mr. Speaker, yes, because they are competent, hard-working, uh, and they are working for a brighter future.